Hello, this is Cynthia Sue Larson with RealityShifters.com and today I'm talking with you about Shambhala Triangles and Human Evolutionary Upgrades. First of all, I'd like to ask if you've ever experienced anything, especially recently, that seems like a change in the way that you perceive things. Because some of us are definitely noticing changes. And I'm very blessed to be working with clients for mentoring and spiritual life coaching. And thanks to them, especially one in particular, I got some really interesting information this last week having to do with energies that are coming through for energetic upgrades, I think for all of the earth, but humans definitely are getting a very special uh, piece of this energetic upgrade. And the way it comes through, it's important for us to be fully healthy and healed before we receive the, these uh, transformational energies. Man, I get all choked up. Yeah, they're powerful. So the way that it came to my attention is the woman I was working with, she um, had an injury uh, last year and she was feeling pain in that injured area where these very powerful energies are flowing through now. And so uh, this is something that often we may not think of. We think, oh, we're just getting upgrades. Let's bring it on. And so, you know, I like to ask how good can it get? Obviously, I would ask that question. Also, if you feel like there are strong evolutionary upgrades coming through, maybe you do have some kind of an injury physically, emotionally, however, um, it's great to call in some kind of smoothing guidance and energy and um, softening so that the pain and the shock um, will not be heightened when these powerful transformational download energies are coming through. Okay, if that doesn't make any sense to you, don't worry about it. Just keep asking how good can it get, um, <laughs> and I'll continue on. Because basically, the other thing I want to get into is what am I noticing. But before I go there, I do want to review that there seems to be a kind of a blueprint for this fifth world that we're moving into. Now, if you've been watching my videos or if you've read my articles, then you know that I've written many years ago about the Hopi and their idea that there's a word, Tunatya, and also Tunatyava. These words talk about comes true, being hoped for. And the idea is that when you line up um, your head with your heart, and you keep your head open to receiving inspiration, and your heart open to staying in connection and communication with all of your relations, all of the, those friends, um, birds, plants, animals, people that you feel connected with, that thanks to that openness and that connection that you have between your head and your heart, everything will be fine. And that's the recommended way to move from the first world to the second, which already happened, second world to the third. Again, we did that. Third to the fourth, we did that too. So the world's ended a few times, according to the Hopi. And guess what? The signs of the times are upon us. It looks like we're about to go into the fifth world. Humans make it through these transformational times, and we've done it before. We get guidance, we get support, and the spiritual masters of Earth that uh, talk about these times also being extremely important, transformational, long prophesied, uh, they would advise also that we keep ourselves open to divine unconditional love, and that we keep expanding into that love consciousness instead of getting swept away by fear. And now, this is where it gets really interesting. I'm going to show you a picture. This is, uh, you may have heard of um, <laughs> Buckminster Fuller. He was very famous for his interest in geodesic domes and this kind of an architecture. He noticed much younger in his life that triangles are actually stronger in shape and form than squares. And so when he was building these geodesic domes, he would work with that triangle, which you can see if you look closely. These are triangles formed, uh, joined together. And when you do that, you can create other structures, which are very strong, such as this uh, spheroidal shape. And the idea here is um, that with one basic structure, like the triangle, you can build everything. And I'd like to take that as a metaphor to the new world, because some people wonder, what is this new world, this fifth world, going to look like? What shape will it take? 
And the shape that it takes, of course, would be based on what do each of us bring to it? What are we individually expressing ourselves as? How do we relate to the world? And one big way that people historically have been relating to the world is through something that's seen in the drama triangle, also called the victim triangle. And the idea there is that it's what I call an unmarry merry-go-round because usually people are born into the victim role. Things don't go the way that you would want. Um, there are differences in what you'd expect from what, sh what you think should be happening. There's pain and trauma as a result. And I'm not saying any of that didn't happen. I'm just saying that the drama triangle can then become I an identifier for some people. They can actually feel that that's who they are is that long-suffering victim. Um, they can then move on. It, it is a triangle. There are three different roles available. The next moves into uh, rising above one's own problems and helping others escape from their own suffering. Now this is a presumed suffering and this role is the rescuer. The rescuer is recognizable because they're quite anxious and worried and fearful. And so those individuals, again, that's not who they are, but they identify that way. And so it keeps this um, unmerry merry go round going. The third role would be the perpetrator, usually filled with righteous anger that the world is not the way it should be, and they will see to it that, it, that things are changed. Now again, um, there's nothing wrong with anger. There's nothing wrong with worry and fear. There's nothing wrong with the sadness of the victim, the grief. These are fine. They're emotions. They're meant to be flowing through. But when we build our entire society on this framework, it is a triangle, but it's not such a strong triangle. And when these energies are coming through right now, which I know they are, um, those structures are going to collapse. What's, what structures? The structure of the drama, of the trauma and the drama, the fear, the anxiety of the rescuer the grief and the sorrow of the victim, and that righteous anger of the perpetrator. It, we are now reaching a point where it's time to set aside polarizations and differences and to really see clearly with a different way of looking at it. So what's the new shape? What is it? Well, we can stick with a triangle. We can just um, ascend these emotions. And what, what does that look like? Okay, if you take the victim, the sad, the suffering person who feels button, don't push their buttons, they'll be triggered. And you allow that person to feel the true strength of their inspiration and the true fullness of their heart to know that they're safe, that they're connected. When they feel that, then they have the strength of vulnerability. And that can be quite heroic. That's the kind of authenticity and sincerity that we are looking for in the new world. And people that don't have that, they're not going to have such an important role. They can't because others that have this sincerity and authenticity can see right through insincerity and inauthenticity. So that's step one. Um, the next position on the triangle um, used to be the rescuer, and that instead moves into kindness and caring. A deep kind of a compassionate, kind caring based on empathy, recognizing that there is something in common here, and genuinely caring. Not fake caring, but real caring. The third position of that righteous anger, that perpetrator, and what does that transform into? Good question. Okay, that one transforms into a beautiful sense of listening wisdom, very deep listening. The ability to sit quietly in nature, not even moving, meditate, and just be one with nature, with that garden, with the flowers, with the wind, with the sun. And to do this with people, too. And when you do this with people, and you allow them to bring whatever they wish to share, um, it might be junk at first, it might feel unpleasant, but if you stay with it and allow there to be a flowing that does eventually occur, you'll get to that clean string of pure consciousness and pure inspiration that they also possess. And this is what we can then build the new fifth world upon. It's a whole new structure, similar, but based on a much stronger foundation. Okay, now you've stuck with me this far. What are the things I'm noticing? Okay, that's cool. I am absolutely seeing signs of evolutionary human upgrades. Um, last couple of weeks, 
I've been just noticing that I'm seeing visual perceptions that are different. Now I've seen shimmering on surfaces and sometimes I feel like I can see through them. So that I'm used to. But I'm seeing something new. I'm seeing sparkling that looks like twinkling, uh, shining. And I don't see it all the time. But in full sunlight, that's when I first noticed it. I was just walking up to my front door, which is a white painted door. And I could see shimmering and sparkling on it. And I thought, gosh, is this a visual migraine? Because uh, sometimes that it can look like that. So I went inside, I went indoors, and I looked around and the sparkles were gone. I went back outside, the sparkles came back. I went on a walk and the, the asphalt, the black asphalt that's slightly gray, was sparkling too. And that's absolutely new for me. Now some of you might be noticing something similar. So if you, if you feel like, okay, I don't see the sparkles, hang in there because myself and Christopher Anatra and Sh Shane Robinson, um, Christopher Anatra has the um, Quantum Businessman channel on YouTube, and Shane Robinson has Unbiased and On the Fence, and these are two of the co-founders and board members, like I am, on International Mandela Effect Conference. And they have spoken about seeing rainbows um, by the sun, especially when the sun is low on the horizon, near sunset, for example. Then Chris has said he's seen like rainbow shooting out from the sun. And I've seen something like that too. I see a softer light evident and rainbow. Like often if I look at clouds, like right now, I'm seeing um, rainbow colors on the clouds that I never used to see before. So I'm definitely seeing that. So Shane and Chris have talked about this on our iMac Open Tables live streams. And that's all very interesting. So those are two of the three things I'm gonna talk about today. The third one, is this is exciting it feels like um, probably because i was working with the individual who had been suffering from an injury in her body and then she was channeling a tremendous amount of um, transformational energy for the planet right now a tremendous amount and that was painful so i was connecting with this energy that can transmute the pain basically take it away and the same day that i'd done that in the morning that evening i accidentally poured boiling hot water on this hand and that was just a couple days ago and usually there would be there would be a red mark on my hands to today if that happened a couple days ago there's no there was no red mark there was um, a little bit of pain um, this is from a hot tea kettle it had been boiling for uh, and whistling insistently with that very loud whistle for i don't know five to ten seconds before i turned the heat down and immediately began trying to pour the water into my my tea mug but instead I splashed it over half of my left hand with um, only the sense like that was sort of annoying and it's wet and it's hot but I did not feel it was scalding or that it was in any way um, tr causing pain or injury that's new um, the only other times I've ever done anything like that I've needed to immediately immerse my hand in cold running water usually for at least 10 to 30 seconds and maybe put an ice pack on it and even then there'd be redness a couple days later and as I said it looks fine it, it there was no problem whatsoever that was boiling hot water um, like about a half cup of it that just splashed right out of the over full tea kettle all over my hand so this is very interesting as a possible upgrade to be able to recognize okay maybe that pain that was happening maybe i don't need it now i talked to both Sh shane and chris about this and shane robinson was pointing out the idea that perhaps in that instant where the uh, accident occurred and the hot water starts splashing i was making the realization i don't need this to injure myself it's going to be fine and that would be what i'd call a quantum jump just jumping instantly to that reality where it's fine water's not that hot even though i know it's boiling hot in the tea kettle maybe just when it's hitting my hand now it's a whole lot cooler which is certainly what happened i mean it really was a lot cooler and that's quite possible i mentioned this also to chris and um oh chris had a couple of interesting comments he said this does sound like an upgrade and he had some confirmation he said, um, here I'm quoting him, with all the time I've spent in the hot Polynesian sun, the Caribbean sun, etc., I am not getting sunburned at all. 
My skin does get hot, but it doesn't burn. Now Chris is suggesting the possibility that our plasma bodies are coming online and the waters in our body may be upgrading to be of a plasma type frequency where a certain amount of all the atoms are ionized. And Chris also had some insights about um, the, the rainbows and the sparkling. He was suggesting that these could be related to upgrades related to our brain being the projector of our reality and the pineal gland being the lens with our peripheral vision through our eyes allowing us to see the world at 60 frames per second and um, the upgrades related to all of this could be causing that sparkle effect possibly related to the pineal gland or perhaps caused by cryptochromes which are the magnetic sensors in our eyes that we talked about on IMEC Open Tables not too long ago as being a possible Mandela effect because we'd never heard of these before. So what's going on with these upgrades, these human evolutionary upgrades? Um, obviously, we're in the thick of this human transformation, of this global awakening, and we're well on our way. It looks to me like transhumanists are doing their thing. They're trying to bring together man and machine. We obviously don't need that. It seems clear to me that a lot of the upgrades that we would need for survival for whatever we require can absolutely come through naturally, biologically, in ways that I'm describing today as changes in vision, what the functionality is of that, the rainbows and the sparkling, don't know yet, but it's just coming in now. The functionality and the practicality of not getting sunburned, not getting um, burn injuries, <laughs> this is huge. So it looks like we're definitely benefiting. You know I love to talk about the rev humanism concept too. That would be a word that I coined to express a very old idea. This is an old idea that comes from indigenous wisdom keepers the world over who know that when we're in harmonious alignment with nature, then everything's fine and we don't need to alter ourselves. We don't need to tinker with what we're made of and who we are because we're intrinsically naturally meant to be um, as we're created and we are receiving this radical invitation for optimism and also to be of the highest level embodiment of consciousness that we're capable of embodying and that we wish to see in the world. We can also see everyone and everything from the, the perspective of reverence. That's what I see that rev in rev humanism. It can mean revitalization, um, and of course reverence, we can see doors to possible adjacent realities opening up where there were no doors before. All of this is an invitation for us to explore that question I love so much, how good can it get? So until next time, keep asking my favorite question and let me know if you get a chance to comment or let me know however it works for you. If you're noticing any signs like I am, that we're going through some evolution of human consciousness and human awakening and human evolution. So thanks so much. Love you so, so much. This is Cynthia Sue Larson with RealityShifters.com.